come on in, pull up a chair, take a load off, because today I'll be sharing a bit of a how to play as well as my review of Undaunted Normandy from Osprey Games. Should you be storming your local game store to get your hands on a copy of this World War II deck building war game? Or should you make like Switzerland and stay completely hands off? Well, you're going to find out right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. As I mentioned in the open, I'm going to be reviewing Undaunted Normandy in just a moment. But first, I do want to point out, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. So it'll not only let you know when I upload videos such as this review, but also tell you when my live stream, The Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. Of course, when you're not watching videos on The Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com, where we're celebrating over 10 years of bringing you tabletop gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Without further ado, I'm diving on into Undaunted Normandy, which is from Osprey Games. It's designed by David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin, with artwork provided by Roland McDonald. The game is for two players, ages 14 and up, plays in around 45 to 60 minutes. It does carry an MSRP of $40. Should mention, the fine folks over at Osprey Games did provide me with this review copy but neither I nor anyone else affiliated with the gaming gang received any other sort of compensation for me to share my thoughts about this game. It's important that you know that. Swing on over to the other camera because I've sort of got undaunted set up. I have not set up the Americans because I wanted to, to kind of have a, a close, closer in view. I don't want to be zoomed all the way out because I want to kind of discuss what's going on in the game, how you're playing the game, take a closer look at the cards, so on and so forth. So what I talk about with the Germans I've got set up over here, it's the same thing for the Americans. In fact, the two decks essentially play the same. There's really no difference outside of artwork and the names of the soldiers. Everything else is the same. So essentially, this is a deck building war game. So each of the players are going to take on either the Americans or the Germans. And there are a variety of scenarios for you to utilize as well. And that's going to determine what your starting deck is going to look like, like so. I have nine cards in this deck at the moment. Also, what your supply is going to be. This is considered the supply. So... These are all of the German cards. You may not have all of these available to you, depending on the scenario. We also have these dual-sided tiles, which are very cool. We've got a variety of terrains, and we've got buildings, we've got forests. So that is very cool. So you might have a scenario with a much bigger map than this. I'll be the first to point out, this is not actually set up for any scenario that's in the book. I just kind of threw this together to kind of show you that you can create all different scenarios, all different terrain layouts in this game. You don't necessarily have to only stick to the 12 scenarios that are in the scenario book. Component quality wise, cardstock is very nice. These tokens are nice thick cardstock, so they're going to hold up as well. These tiles also nice. Thick cardstock. They will hold up the play. We've got some standard 10 sided dice. So, of course, that, it's all good with that as well. Do want to mention that I would certainly recommend sleeving these cards. You're going to be playing this game quite a bit. So, 
you are going to see some wear and tear on these cards. Even though the card stock is nice, sleeve these. You'll thank me later. Especially because this game is not easy to get. It took me so long to actually be able to review this because it was out of stock. So when it got back in stock with the new print run, the fine folks over at Osprey Games were kind enough to send along a review copy. Real quickly, I'm going to show you the rule book as well as the scenario book. Rule book, everything is laid out really nicely. Very easy to understand. Didn't have any head, head scratchers or anything along those lines. Talks about the cards. Talks about how to play. To be honest, uh, the game plays very easily. It's, it's not a lot to figure out outside of the various different actions that are available depending on what the unit is that you're activating. So, and we've got artwork throughout. We've got a quick reference. I would have liked to have seen this quick reference on a separate card, a couple of cards for the players. As you can see, I always try to do my best to take care of my games and this is getting a little tatty not too bad because of having to check out the reference page here when i'm playing this with someone who has not played this before but nice job on the rule book itself then we have a scenario book as i mentioned there are a dozen whoops as i bump my little objective counter there We've got a dozen scenarios, and they're all based in reality. So these scenarios are kind of drawn from the experiences of the 30th Infantry Division. So we've got scenarios. We have campaign play as well. You can string these together. It's going to tell you how to set up your board what cards are going to be available in your starting deck. And as I mentioned, we've got a dozen of these. And one of the nice things, too, is that these scenarios also kind of get your feet wet and introduce some, some new things as you're playing. So like machine gunners and mortars and so on. So very cool like that quite a lot. And you can, like I said, you can create your own <laughs> layout maps, create your own scenarios, however you would like. So essentially in the game, you're going to have three phases. Each of the players are going to do this during their turn. So you're gonna start off with your deck and you're gonna draw four cards. Now we have some fog of war cards. So you're gonna start off with two fog of war cards which are like a lot of deck builders. They're just filler cards that you really want to get out of your deck because, as I mentioned, you're going to only draw four cards. You're going to take a look at those cards. There we go. We've got actually both the Fog of War cards. So once you've drawn your cards, we have the initiative phase. So what you're going to do here is you're going to take one of your cards, you're going to lay it face down, and... All you care about is the number in the upper left corner, and that is going to show your initiative. So if you have a low number, it's whoever's got the highest number wins initiative for that turn. And an interesting aspect of it is whoever had initiative. And if you're just beginning the scenario, it's going to tell you which side has the initiative. If it's a tie, if you've already got the initiative, you keep the initiative. So just to start off with our, our hand of four cards, we, we're kind of hamstrung right off the bat because we're going to play, if we want to be able to do things, we're going to want to play the Fog of War as our initiative. And then that's just, this will just go to your discard pile. So you'll end up taking putting that into your discard pile then whoever's got the initiative, let's say that the Germans have initiative for this turn. Now we've got three cards we can use. Now, the Fog of War does nothing. It allows us to do absolutely nothing. 
So we would we can either play it or we can just keep it in our hand. And when we're done playing our other two cards, just say, okay, I'm done with my turn and discard it. It doesn't doesn't really matter. These fog of war cards just kind of like gum up the works like you see in a lot of deck building games. So you're going to see here, I've got some tokens out. And I've got some tokens out here as well. So these are the American forces. These are the German forces. And many of these scenarios are going to re re revolve around scoring objective points. So anywhere from one to three for these tiles. So you're, you're trying to control these tiles and whoever ends up controlling a certain number of objective points is the winner. Another way you can win is if you've eliminated all the riflemen from the other side. So it's basically you've pinned the enemy down because they no longer have any riflemen available to them. So we do have a few different types of units as well. So here I've got scouts and riflemen. And in order to have one of these tokens out on the board, you must have one of their cards in your deck. So you're a platoon leader and you are commanding squads of troops. So the squads are made up of scouts, riflemen, and machine gunners. So as you'll see here, these, these counters are still sitting on top of these units. That means these are available to me with the counters here. That means I don't have any of those out on the board yet. I don't have any of those in my deck yet. So I can't do anything to command them. So what we'd be looking at here, I've got Rifleman B. So that's a Rifleman from Squad B. And I also have Squad Leader. So that's actually a pretty good card. So we have different actions that these cards can perform. And it, well, if you see a star, that means that's a, that's a leader card. Leaders are not represented by counters on the board. They, they cannot be eliminated. But I can bolster, so I could actually take two cards from my B squad. So right here, Scout, Rifleman, Machine Gunner, and add them to my discard pile. Though they're now, they will be part of my deck. But like many deck building games, when you acquire new cards, they go into your discard first, and you have to get to the point where you reshuffle your cards before you're going to be able to draw them. So I've got the squad leader. I've also got the rifleman. So you'll notice here, we've got this little binocular icon. I've got it here with the binoculars here as well. So that means that's scouted. That means that's a scouted location. So that means units can move into that. Now, scouts are essentially the only unit that can move into areas that have not been, well, snipers as well, I should say, can move into an area that has not been scouted. So because I have a rifleman, which I could move, but I can't move anywhere. I can't move to an adjacent tile because they haven't been scouted. So I can't do that. I could take control. I could use my rifleman to control this because we have scouted it. So once we would, would scout this, I could flip that over and that shows we control this tile. Problem is we don't need to control it because it, it's not worth any points. So I wouldn't be doing that anyway. So what I can do is I can attack. And on these cards, you know what? Let's let's zoom in. We'll get a we'll get a closer look at what's going on here. So you can see these different abilities on the cards. So I can attack. And you'll have a little circle with a number. So that means that's how many dice I get to roll for my attack. So I get to roll one die. So there is no 
line of sight. There is range in the game, but you can fire at any range. And if you get a 10, it's always a hit. So even uh, with defense, like units having uh, defenses, you can still hit them on a, on a 10. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to attack. So basically what I would do is I've got a 10-sided die. I'm going to be able to roll. So who can I attack? Well, I could attack the units that are off this way. But since we can see the rifleman squad here anyway, what I'd be doing is I'd, I would attack. So in order to attack, it's very easy. All you're going to do is you're going to take a look at the shield icon. So that's a four. We're going to take a look at, is there a shield icon in the tile? Like that's on the tile here. And we do. We see that we've got a three. There are mortars in the game. So if you look here, this shows that's a, that's a defensive three. But it's a defensive one if they were being attacked with a mortar. So we've got a four. We've got a three. So that's seven. And then we're going to count the number of tiles between so we got one two so that gets us nine so i could attack i need a nine or a ten to score a hit ah, and of course i didn't score a hit so in that situation that would be it i would be done with that card i could discard that i could play the squad leader so i can either bolster and take two cards from over in my supply here and add them to my deck i could inspire which essentially I could just take this card and use it again if I wanted. That's what in, 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 uh, Inspire will actually do. So I would be able to do that. But the reality is because I want to bring more forces onto the board, I would no doubt take some additional cards. So I could take the scout. So that allows me to scout tiles which is important because remember i can only move scouts and snipers into unscouted tiles they can attack they can recon and they can conceal so when you scout what i basically do is i would add a binocular token onto that tile where that scout would have moved to so we've got the scouts b here we're Obviously, this is not taking place in this turn. I'm just showing you what would be going on. Whenever you do the scouting, and I could move up to two and place two of these, but every time I do that, I have to take Fog of War cards and add them to my deck for each one of these that I drop off. So the more scouting you do, the more Fog of War cards end up getting added to your deck. We also do have Recon. And what Recon allows me to do is it allows me to take a Fog of War card from my deck and put it back to the supply. So scouts are very important in this game because if you lose your scouts and you've been doing scouting you're going to have a bunch of these fog of war cards that are just you know gumming up your works in your hand of cards because you're always going to draw four cards and you're always going to use one of those cards in order to try to you know uh do your initiative see who's got the high initiative who's going to go first that turn so you're really using three cards every turn to do things so we have machine gunners as well. So machine gunners can move. They can attack with two dice. They can also try to suppress, which they get to roll four dice. So with suppression on the hits there, what they would end up doing is they'll actually suppress that unit. They won't actually give that unit a hit. Suppression is very important, though, because if you can suppress your opponent's forces, when they get the card to activate that unit, what they end up having to do is they have to use that card to flip them back over. So you can 
you can cause your opponent to have to have to utilize cards that they're getting in their hand to flip these over when they could have been taking actions and attacking you with the card. So the machine gunners, very, very cool. Don't forget about that suppression. So we also have snipers. So snipers are allowed to stalk. So essentially that means they can they can move that amount. So stalk one so they can move to an adjacent tile. Uh, or they can attack. Keeping in mind, you can only do one of these actions on the card when you play the card. We also have some other leaders as well. So we also have our platoon guide. So they're able to bolster. So they're able to bolster, add one more card to your deck. They can also guide. And guide allows you to move a another unit one tile. So this is a pretty pretty important card as well also still in our deck we've got our platoon sergeant which allows you bolster three now you'll notice here it just says bolster three that means i can add three cards from any place in my supply i can add any of those to my supply of cards so as an example first time you're playing your platoon sergeant in a situation like this, I would definitely bolster and I would take my squad leader for squad C because without having the squad leader in play, I need to either have the platoon sergeant or the platoon guide in order to add anybody from C squad to the ranks of my deck. So when you're in combat, if this was a hit, let's say I had fired my rifleman and I had gotten a zero. I had gotten that 10. Well, that would have been a hit on the rifleman. So when you take combat hits, what you need to do is you have, first of all, take a look in your hand. Do you have somebody that corresponds with that unit? So do you have a rifleman from squad A? in your hand as the Americans. If you don't, then you take a look to see in your discard pile if you've got any uh, cards with the rifleman from squad A. If you do, you're gonna discard it. If you had one in your hand, you're gonna discard it. If you don't have that card in either your hand or your discard pile, this counter is gonna be removed from the board. So it's gone. It gets removed. Now it's very possible that you have the squad leader for A, you get to play that and you can, you'll be able to return a squad member out onto the board as well. So as far as what you have available is you've got three scouts for each squad You've got five riflemen for each squad. And it's made a lot easier to, to track these down because they all have the same artwork, except for one of the German squads. One of the German squads actually has one card with different artwork, but it is the correct squad. And then with the machine gunner, you also have the three cards. So essentially what you're looking to do is you're looking to try to score hits on your opponent. And at the same time, you're trying to fill your deck with units because that way it's very difficult. If, if I've got three A squad riflemen and I take a hit on my A squad riflemen, Okay, well, all right, so I've lost one of my soldiers from that squad. I'm not going to lose this token. Remember, one of the aspects to win any of the battles is if you eliminate all of the rifleman count tokens on the board of your opponent. So even if, let's say, I was able to eliminate this and my opponent still had riflemen in their supply for squad A, it doesn't matter, I won. 
So there's uh, some little little things going on under the surface that are not, you know, completely obvious as far as the game itself. We also have the mortars. We can actually rain down blasts on our opponents. So essentially you're looking at it's an area attack and it's going to use a different defense as well. So we've got that. So we've, we have those. We've got the snipers. I already showed you the snipers as well as the various different commanders also. So just to give you a better idea of some of the artwork on these cards as well. Show you some of the Americans here. American Mortar Squad, Scout, Rifleman, Machine Gunner. This is a very unique deck building game. This is very different than, no doubt, any deck building game you have played previously. Just to show you some of the artwork as well. And once again, you're gonna you're gonna play your scenario until either you control a certain number of objective points, or you've eliminated all the riflemen on the board from your opponent and you've pinned them essentially you've won. Now, it, it is possible that you, both sides could be pinned. If that's the case, then the game does end in a tie. So that is, in essence, pretty much how you play Undaunted Normandy. So let's swing on over to the other camera, and I will provide some final thoughts as well as my review score. I gotta say, I can see why everybody went gaga for undaunted normandy and why it sold out this is a lot of fun it's super easy to get into granted you have a variety of different actions that some of the different cards have some take a little getting used to but once again you do have the reference sheet that's in the rule book for you to take a peek at I gotta say, uh, the mechanics of this are a little bit different. It's kind of a kind of a mashup of area control, uh, almost you know, like I said, you've got the deck building as well. I know some grognards out there might not like the abstractness of the game. Once again, there's no line of sight. I mean, you could you could have the longest you know board <laughs> that you're fighting over, and you can still hit on a 10 no matter what, no matter what the range, no matter what the defense. Some people might quibble about that a little bit. Do you also want to mention that both sides are essentially the same? Usually the only thing that's going to change them up is the scenario. The scenario is going to have different units that are available to each of the sides. But in essence, the cards all play the same. So an American scout plays the same as a German scout, an American machine gun plays the same as a German machine gun. Some people might not dig that as well. So, I mean, there are some minor quibbles to be had, but they are, in my opinion, very, very minor. My nephew, Cameron, loved this game. I'm a big fan of deck building games. He's a huge fan of deck building games and also World War II games. So he has really, really dug this a lot. And so have I. One thing I will mention, you could see a little bit of analysis paralysis. I know you would think probably not. You, you only have three cards, really, you're going to be playing in your turn. But it does happen, uh, especially when somebody's first learning how to play the game. It's kind of like, uh, all right, so uh, should I should I move? Should I attack? What should I do here? And of course, you've got the three different cards. Hopefully that give you a, a wide variety of, of options for you to play. Other than that, I mean, there's, there's really nothing I found wrong with this game at all. Definitely get sleeves for the cards because you're going to need them because you're going to be shuffling these cards up a lot. And I got to be honest, you'll be playing this game a lot too if you, uh, if you like what you've seen so far. On a scale of 1 to 10... Gosh, I was so close to giving this a 10. So close to giving it a 10. 
Only reason I didn't give it a 10 out of 10 is because both sides play identical. That's that's really it. And I get it. It's supposed to be, you know, platoon commander, a little higher level out. I get it. I understand. I would have liked to have seen a little bit of variety as far as how each of the uh, units does play, depending on if it's American or German. But that said, I give Undaunted Normandy a 9.5. Yes, a 9.5 out of 10. It is that good. And I certainly believe you don't even have to be a serious war gamer to want to put this into your collection. It's that good. All right, that's it for this time out. Once again, let me remind you, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. It will not only let you know when I upload videos such as this review, but also tell you when my live stream, the Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. All right, so that's it for this time out. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer, and as I've been wrapping up all of my videos during this pandemic, I certainly do hope all of you out there are being smart and staying safe. Oh, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, if you'd like to subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel, by all means, click right here. And if you'd like to check out one of our recent live streams, click right up top. And if you want to roll the dice and see what the algorithm for YouTube recommends, click right here. And of course, thank you once again for watching. And gang, please stay safe and wear a mask.